Hello everyone and welcome to Handmade Hero, show where we code a complete game live on stream. I am going to... Well, I am going to go ahead and see what we want to do today because I think mostly uh, the only thing I wanted to look at that was a hangover from last week was just the fact that uh, I wanted to make sure that we had a, a good answer for how brains would work in cases where we didn't want them to activate if only some of the parts of the brain were uh, together. And I guess, like, that's sort of the topic for today. I don't know how much we want to do with that or don't want to do with that because it kind of depends um, on how far we want to go with it. So what I'm going to do is... Oh, whoops. Uh, what I'm going to do first is run the shell. There we go. Um, so I, I don't really know uh, exactly what we want to do with it. And really what I'm talking about here is just the part of the code where, like if you look at, at how we're doing doors right now, so or well, how we're doing anything. So what happens is we gather up entities based on what to which brain they belong. Uh, and then we run the code on them, right? And I don't know to what extent we want to do... Uh, I don't know to what extent we actually want this to, to happen. But the problem that we're seeing is this means that things like multi-entity systems get constructed per frame and then disbanded, right? So in other words, what happens is entities are the permanent thing that gets stored. They get placed out into, you know, the world. And when they get pulled in... If the particular region that you're simulating only contains some of the entities that were part of a unified structure, it doesn't actually matter. The brain will still run and can do stuff to those entities. Now, I don't know whether we want to change this design because we haven't really gone anywhere on it. It just is what it is. Like, it's, you know, there's not much code here, right? If we were to rewrite this code, it would be hardly anything. So there's really not much that we have to do. Uh, and you can see here this uh, mark brain and actives thing, right? You can see this thing is already designed to sweep over the brains and and mark uh, and it, and pull entities in from the inactive region. If if there is a brain and there are entities that are active or not, it will like activate entities that were not there. That that it will activate entities that were in the inactive region of the sim. Uh, automatically, right? So we'll pull them in. <clears throat> so the problem that I see is even with something like this, it doesn't really help because no matter what you do, there's always no, there's always going to be that regional split where you basically say, all right, if something is inside the active region, then there will be things outside the active region wherever the split is. And we're always going to have this happen. I guess you could say, well, you know what? Now that I think about it, this feels like, though, if you assume that one of them has to be active. Yeah, so so uh, if you assume that one of them has to be active, which this does, this looks and sees are any active, then we make all of them active, right? So I guess my only question is, does that just mean we needed to check to see if they were active first? Okay. Yeah, you know what? This may just work. We may just have not really done the full code now that I think about it. Interesting, interesting. Okay, so let me run this by you real quick. First of all, I want to see where we actually do this. Is it in world or sim region or what? Because uh, mark brain actives um, has to be called by somebody in order to do something. I don't see it being called here. So, all right. So, you, you riddle, riddle me this, Batman. Um... 
because I, I think this maybe this this thing that we did maybe really did solve the problem now that I think about it uh, and and maybe it's just a case of it uh, of when we did it we didn't quite think it through all the way we we were like sort of thinking halfway about it um and we didn't quite like internalize uh what actually needed to happen right um and so it's entirely possible that we can actually use this system i'm trying to think of whether i should do a drawing here i probably should do a drawing um do y'all mind waiting one second because I think I can probably use the Starco Galaxy setting setup to do the drawing real quick. Hold on. Okay, let me see if I can use the Star Code Galaxy setting for the setup for this, uh, because I I probably can. I don't know. Might as well check it out. Let's take a look. Um, all right. So the only question is, if I'm doing this here, is this mic set up to hear me well enough? So can you hear that okay? Let me go check. Because I haven't done level testing of this in OBS. When I record Star Code Galaxy, I actually record quite differently than this setup. But I think it can stream. So let me check. How's that audio? Is that audio any better? Hopefully that's a little, that's, I just boosted it a little bit. All right, so let me just explain really quickly what's going on here because this can be kind of confusing. And again, this is pretty experimental stuff. All the entity system stuff we've done has just been entirely off the cuff, like looking for interesting things to do because I feel like that's just an interesting thing. And it's probably something that, you know, most people, they just kind of do weird stuff like, oh, we implemented an entity component system and then we just shove everything through it. But people don't generally think about like what they actually should be doing to try and make a good architecture for programming entities. And so we're just trying some stuff out because we want to see if we find anything interesting as a result. So here's what's actually happening, right? We have entities in the world. And for example, let's say we have the door, like the stuff with the door. So we'll have something where we have, you know, a, a room, let's say, that's kind of out here, maybe something like this, right? And then we have, like, one of these things has like a blocker. So there's a door, like this right here is a door. 
You know what I'm saying? So if you have a door here and you've got some stuff in here that's dependent that like opens the door. So let's say there's the tiles, like we kind of were making those tiles you hopped on. And these are kind of wired to the door. So when you, you know, when you step on all of these, the door opens. That itself is sort of, that is what the brain is in terms of the actual like gather. So there's a thing called a brain, right? And these are created every frame. So on a particular frame, if you have a door, right? A, and then some tiles, B, C, D or whatever. Then what happens is when on a particular frame, each of these has a brain ID in it that says, I belong to brain 4,976. It's just a number. It doesn't exist anywhere. It's just a number in each entity that says, this is the brain I belong to. On a given frame, when entities are gathered, the entities are gathered based on their brain ID and put into brains that only execute for that frame. So A, B, C, D get put in here into slots, right? And then on that frame, just, just on the frame, the brain executes and it, it uses everything that's in there, right? That's what happens. But the problem is, since the world system is designed to handle literally arbitrarily large worlds, so you could put worlds so vast into it that no one could ever play them because they would just take too long, uh, it's designed to handle that. What that means is that we never simulate the whole world at once. We only simulate a region that you're trying to update at any given particular time um, because there would be no way to even fit the entire world in memory, potentially, if you really wanted to scale it all the way out. It's designed to literally be able to like page to disk if you wanted to, right? So uh, this section here where we've got uh, this room with the door, well, you know, the player is going to approach that you know, and they're going to be in some other room, right? And maybe they're coming through here. So maybe the player is here, right? Um, that's not player, player. That says played. Okay. So the player is here and they're coming through the door. We're simulating a region around them. And so when we do that gather, maybe we do something, right, where we only gather part of uh, the system. And really, I probably should draw it like this to show this particular bug. So maybe let's pretend that actually instead of the door A being there, maybe that's not the door, right? Maybe the door is actually down uh, here, right? So this is the actual door in question. So instead of the door being up there, the door is here. It's still all part of the same brain though, uh, just like before. So when the player comes in here, the problem that we might have, and that I think we were having, although we didn't really try to track it down, is that when we gather up our simulation region, so this here is, is the region we're going to simulate, we always run the, uh, run the risk of gathering an entity whose components are on, like some of whose components are on the other side. Because remember, a brain is just a thing that gets assembled per frame to do activities. And so what would happen is, if you only gathered A, then B, C, and D aren't there. And of course, brains don't exist in any capacity other than temporarily for that frame. As a result, it means that the brain itself only sees A and then goes, oh, I'm just a door that has no dependent tiles, so I guess I should unlock because nothing is preventing me from unlocking, right? Same thing would happen if, say, you got just a little bit different, and so D and A were both there, but B and C weren't. Then, if D had been stepped on, but B and C hadn't, technically the door shouldn't open, but it would, because it would look and go, oh, I've got one plate, the plate is D, is it down? Yes, okay, then I'll open, right? So the problem that we have is this partial gather, and we knew it was a problem before. We weren't thinking about doors. What we were thinking about is entities like snakes. So for example, let's suppose that in the exact same kind of scenario, um, we have maybe a situation where there's a snake here, right? So there's a snake where we've got like a bunch of entities and they are cut by that sim region. Well, what will happen is it'll move these two somewhere, but these will stay behind, right? So same exact problem, just a different way that it might manifest itself. Door that opens when it shouldn't open, snake that moves its front half, not its back half, or vice versa, right? 
that is that is what we mean when we're saying <clears throat> uh, that this partial gather creates this this problem of brains not being filled in, right? <clears throat> okay. So if you imagine that and just keep that scenario in your head, what we did to try and fix that is say, oh, okay, instead of pulling things in in this way, we already know that we kind of have an exterior region around the actual simulation region anyway for things like lighting and whatever, because we need light to be able to propagate like into the region and stuff like that, and we need to be able to see where the light sources are. And furthermore, we may need to like uh, do some stuff where we know, for example, that someone who's trying to hop in this direction will or won't be able to hop. So we need to be able to, be able to hop out of the simulation region and then just kind of freeze out there and stop being simulated. But they have to be able to cross it. Otherwise, they'd all kind of be like pinned in by this weird border. So it's possible to leave the region because we know there's stuff in the region. And what we do is we basically have that region be marked as inactive and this region be marked as active. So what happens is we actually know we will never really get a situation because snakes and doors and tiles can never be so long that they stretch across the active and inactive regions, right? Nothing's ever gonna go all the way off uh, from inside active to, to in inactive because we just set that size to be the size of our largest entity, you know? So what we did is we said, oh, okay, well, if there are some entities that are active, right, in the brain, we will mark everything inside a brain as active if any of them were active, right? Which makes sense because then it's like, oh, if these were inactive and these were active, we'll just say, oh, make all these active so that the brain is complete. Problem is, as far as I can tell, we never put in a check to say don't run a brain unless the brain itself had someone active in it. The brains are just running all the time. They're never looking to see whether their entities were active or inactive. So what we did is we said, well, we guaranteed that everything in a brain would be active if anything was, but then we never checked to see whether anything in the brain was active at all, which means that even if all of the stuff is outside the region, so even if we were going back to this case where A is here and the tiles are like going up off the region like that, if they're all inactive, we still run the brain. So we actually know that we shouldn't run the brain. We even looked and said, oh, it's all inactive, but we never actually turned the brain off. So I'm thinking the only bug we actually have here is that we're running brains on inactive entities. And if we were only running them on active entities, I think we wouldn't have the bug. So my goal now is to just look and see if that's the case. Because if that's the case, we really don't have a bug um, in our architecture. We have a bug in the sense that, that this is happening. But we wouldn't have a bug in our architecture. We just have to fix that check and say, don't run brains that are inactive. They don't have at least one active entity because if they have one active entity, then the brain itself is active, right? Because all of them will be marked active. That may just work. So that's what I'm going to go check. Okay, <clears throat> how did that go? Was everyone able to follow that right? Okay. All right. Yeah, the light board is even more magic than you think it is. You just haven't seen some of its advanced features. Uh, why have more than one brain? Uh, so the reason for that is because, uh, so let's suppose you have like multiple entities that are separate, right? Or multiple creatures that are separate, but they're actually multi-entity. So for example, you have like two monsters, each of which has like a, is a snake and has lots of little pieces. 
So the brain is the thing that coordinates the motion of those pieces. You want one brain per creature, right? Because they're thinking and moving independently. They're not related to each other. So what we do is we create each one of those brains to handle each separate creature so that they run as a unified creature. That's that's all we're talking about. And the bug is that we're allowing brains to run even if they're only if no thing in the uh, brain is marked as active. That means it could span outside of the inactive region and there could be entities missing. What we need to do is just make sure we only run brains that have active entities and then they can never be partial because no entity can be long enough to extend from the active region to outside the inactive region. I know it's a little confusing. Um, okay, so what I'm going to propose here is you see this mark brain actives thing. Um, so here's the thing that does execute brain. And what I think we want to do is something like this. Right? So each brain is either active or inactive. And then what we would do is we'd say, we go down here and say, if the brain is active, then we mark it as such. Uh, if the brain is inactive, then we mark it as such. Like that. So I think that's what we want to do. Um, you know, don't quote me on that, right? But I think that's what we want to do. So if we do that, then we will never execute a brain that uh, doesn't have all of its entities in it, pretty much, if I'm correct about that behavior. And so in here, uh, we should then be able to do, 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 just add that. So I think that might work. Um, what we need to do is probably construct a good test case or at least have some way of verifying whether it works or not. I can go hop around right now and sort of like inspect whether if I can see the bug happen, then I know that didn't fix it. But that's not really particularly conclusive, especially if I see if I don't see it happen because this is kind of a wonky bug uh, to have. So, you know, you don't really know if you've actually put it in a situation where it should happen. Um, so we'll see. So I think this one is correct because there are no, there are no tiles. So that one should open. Uh, oh, that dude just stepped on all of the tiles. Okay. So no, stop. Okay, so that one is not down, so that's good. That one's down, but that's because the dude... These dudes open all of our doors. So that looks like we still have a problem, right? Because that, that was not down, but the door was. So I think I'm going to have to create some way of like constructively testing this so we can see what's going on. Um, if that makes sense. Although, I, like I said, it's pretty tough... I don't really necessarily know if everything else is working properly. So it may have also nothing to do with the thing that I was just talking about, which I do think we definitely want. Um, it's just a question of, of, uh, uh, of whether or not this, we definitely need to solve that problem. It's just a question of whether or not it has anything to do with this particular problem of doors being open that shouldn't be open. Right. All right, so first things first, let's remove these little hopping guys because they're triggering these doors for us, which is not good. Like, we don't actually want um, them to be doing that. So in the place snake call here, I'm just going to just I'm just going to turn that off, right? Uh, and then the other thing that I don't understand is I'm not sure if door from A to B always has place tile pattern occur in it. I'm not sure I understand how we're seeing some of the stuff that we're seeing. So there's there's another sort of weird problem there uh, that I'd like to address. So we'll see. So now there should be no hoppers. So we should be able to see just raw what's going on. Like no one can open doors for us now. 
um, they were like opening all the doors, which was not what we had wanted. So if we go in to here, the first question I have is, how is this door, like what is going on with that door? So what you can see here is there is a door and it's down, which is right because there are no tiles in this room, right? There are no tiles. The problem is I can't understand how we placed a door, but no tiles. So door from A to B is kind of busted, I guess, because you can see that the door, uh, that door is clearly these tiles here, right? There the door went down, quote unquote door, the stand in tree went down. But you can see here, there is a door that got placed, but no tiles. And so I don't understand how that's possible because door from A to B, right, is set to true in only that one place, as far as I know. And yet, uh, oh, well, well, maybe that's correct because it goes from pre room to room. So if we're back, if we're back placing it, then I guess the problem is this actually needs to be that. Yeah. In other words, if it goes from pre room to room, then door from A to B means that the tile pattern should be placed actually in the in the previous room, not this room. Right? Okay. So that was just a bug in the request. The room generator was operating, I think, uh, exactly as, as intended. It was just telling it to place the t tiles in the wrong room. There we go. So there's a door, I hop, and now it should be open. And it is. Um, this one has a door that's closed, uh, which is good. And so now it's open. And my goal here is just to see if I can find any evidence that doors open on their own, right? Um, so we don't know yet. It looks so far so good. And maybe that other bug had something to do with it. Maybe, no, here you go. So here's one that is open, but there is no right there there was no tile hopping that happened right um okay so that's very reliable as well that one has been wrong every time and so i assume we can take a look at what's happening to that particular door um I assume we can just step in and see, right? Uh, so I'm guessing that I should be able to just make a, like, I should be able to just set a breakpoint where the door actually gets um, opened and see why it triggered. Because I should, I think, be able to... Um, <clears throat> I should be able to just look at least to see whether or not the whether or not that makes sense for the door to have opened. So switch is set, for example. Um, I should be able to like uh, I should be able to to stop right here, right? Because that's what unlocks a door. So if I switch to a debug build here, I, I think I think I should be able to like stop every time a door gets unlocked. Um, and we should, in theory, trigger that should trigger at some point when I'm not doing anything, meaning, We'll, we'll hop along, 
uh, on the tiles, and we'll unlock the door, and that should trigger, and we should be able to watch that happen. But then at some point, if our theory is correct, we will be doing nothing like that. We'll just be hopping around in empty, like on an empty set of tiles, just moving around, and we should have that situation occur uh, sporadically, right? Um, that's the theory anyway. Uh, and, and I, you know, the only other thing that could happen is we, it never triggers, which means that somehow the door is getting created in the unlocked state, which would be a totally different bug that has, I guess, nothing to do with what I'm talking about. And we were looking at the wrong place. So we'll see. Uh, but if I hop down here, you can see me kind of just, you know, hopping along and when we hit this third one right now um i'm sorry fourth one rather uh we should see this unlock run and you know uh it should only run once uh and so that's what we expect no issues so far uh everything that all looks according to plan so there that's wrong this is what we kind of wanted to see. So we should not be unlocking a door here, but we are. Uh, and it looks like it did... Ha Oops. It looks like it did happen when... W it, it does look like it happened precisely when the region changed, which seems to suggest that I'm right uh, about the fact that it's the brain that's the problem. So the first thing I'm going to do, though, is just take a look at the switches and see if any of that's true. So you can see it, it does seem to be exactly what I said. So it's the door is somehow inbounds or getting gathered, right? Uh, but there are no tiles being gathered for it, if that makes sense. Um... Now, how this is in the active region and the rest are not even in the inactive apron, I don't know. So I'm wondering if the active-inactive thing is, like, not working properly or something. Let's take a quick look to see which flag is the entity active flag, because maybe that is just broken, right? Um... So active would be set um, to four, which is set. So it does think it's active, right? Um, so somehow, that doesn't make any sense. Somehow it's included in the active region, but the inactive region does not extend far enough um, to encompass the other elements that it depends on. And I don't know if that just means we need it to be a slightly larger apron. Let's take a look. Another possibility is that we just don't handle entity flag active correctly at the moment, right? Um, so that's just the brain code that we're looking at before. So here we can see a setting and clearing the flag as to whether or not, uh, the entity is, is in the update bounds, right? Um, so that's good. Uh, that's all good. So it looks good to me. So the only question is, like, what is this? How are we defining the updatable bounds? So it may just be that those are not the right size. Um, but what I what I might want to do there is have a way of seeing those bounds better. Um, so that I can visualize this. Uh, so, so like, actually, let's do that first. 
Um, I, I will look to see what those are uh, real quick. But... I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but it doesn't look like the updatable bounds are even any different. Right? So we may have just kind of accidentally disabled that as we were doing stuff. Because it doesn't look it doesn't look like we actually do anything there. So that's probably the issue, is that we're just not doing that anymore. Um, so let's take a look and see if we can draw that a little bit better. So, oh no, I'm sorry, we have to pause for a second. I think I hear the puss. Hello, puss. Come on in. It's okay. It's okay. Sorry, I, I closed the door. It's okay, puss. It's cool. It's cool. You want to come up? You can come up. Come on up. The puss want to the puss want to come up. She was outside. Come I mean out not outside in the world, but outside uh, the room. Do you want to say hi to everyone on the stream? Do you want to say hi? Or do you just want to cuddle? What do you want to do? Here, you can come up. You can come up here. There you go. Okay. Okay. That's a good puss. Um, so what we have now is uh, fairly solid evidence that, that the reason that our... our uh, solution wasn't working is because we don't actually use an apron anymore. I don't know why. Um, probably when we were just like doing the entity cache stuff, we just stopped playing with the updatable bounds thing um, and forgot to like put that back in. So I don't know why we did that. Um, that's just what happened. And so we probably need to fix that by making sure those bounds are, are larger. Um, and uh and we'll see. What do you what are you doing, puss? What do you what do you what's wrong? What's going on? What's going on? What's going on? What? Do you wanna come up? Do you wanna come up? Just come up on the shoulder. You you like being on the shoulder, just go up there. Yeah, yeah. There you go. Go ahead. Um so I think mostly uh, all we really need to do there is is draw that first and make sure that this appears to be a reasonable explanation for the problem first, because I'm not sure if it really is. Um, and then just enlarge that and deal with any issues that come from enlarging that. Um, I think that's all we really need to do. Um, it's going to be a little bit hard to visualize it because we need to draw entities that are outside it, which we don't currently do. Um, yeah. Let's do this first before I do anything else. Um, it's okay, puss. It's okay. No, 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 no. Just, just stay calm. You don't have to type right now. Uh, Casey's typing. Oh my gosh. No. Oh boy. No, no. Stop. T Puss. No. No. That's my finger. Okay. Hold on a second. The puss may have done some stuff. All right. I tried to close the editor and not save any changes so that the puss wouldn't uh, add any code to the project. She... She likes to add code, and she's not really great at it, to be honest with you. Um, just just not, not fabulous. Um, okay. Uh, 
Okay, puss. Calm down, please. You're moving the microphone. Puss. Okay. Uh, so I'm going to switch back to a release build and just use the uh, debug camera to kind of pull out and see what's going on. Okay, puss, what are you doing? You gotta make a decision here. We gotta do some programming. We're not done yet. What do you wanna do? What do you wanna do? Why don't you just sit down? Why don't you just sit? You can sit on my lap while I'm programming. Why don't you do that? What do you think? Unfortunately, you can't stay on my shoulder because I don't actually have a way to type while you're on my shoulder because you tend to slide off, you know? And then I get scratched as you try to, like, hang on. Okay. Uh, so if we use the debug camera to zoom out here, um, I just kind of want to see where this line occurs. Like, when this occurs, does it seem plausible? Uh... You can see this is the active region of stuff, right? Um, and if we kind of, it's a little bit hard to see because the upper area is all filled in here. Um, but so in theory, when I hop across here, that should have triggered the breakpoint. And the question is, does that make sense that it did? Um, and if you look at the actual setup for it, it's hard to say. Because I, it, I, to be honest, it doesn't really look like it should have. Um, hold on a second. Let me really quickly just... Because it doesn't look like the door should have paged in quite yet at that point right looks like the door should have been slightly up from there you know what I'm saying it was almost there so so maybe I guess maybe I could believe that somehow that was there and just not being drawn, but it didn't look like it was there. It was right on the edge, though. So, I mean, I could believe it, um, but I don't know. So, let me take a look. Also, that did break, breakpoint did not trigger that time, which was weird. A little bit disquieting. Um, so, yeah, I'm curious to know what happens if I change those uh, bounds. So, where we actually do the um, updatable bounds. Um, I'm just curious what happens if this is actually an enlarged region, right? Uh, and And... I guess the idea is the sim region bounds are the whole bounds and the updatable bounds are supposed to be a subset of those bounds, right? I mean, I think that's what's supposed to be happening here. So like, So, like, I assume that the add radius 2 part of things, you know, that should get shrunk down.
and maybe the bounds enlarge. So it could actually be that what we would want to do is more like this. You know? And then the question is just how big uh, that should actually be. You know what I'm saying? But, like, if we imagine just temporarily uh, that we added something here, I don't know what it would be exactly. But we added something uh, substantial, right? I'm just curious if this will work or not. Uh, so if we did something like this where we take the updatable bounds and then we we basically pull in like a larger subset. Um, I'm wondering if that would work. I don't know what it means by can't convert all the argument types because they're rectangles, right? So it should just work. So we could just do it that way. I'm not sure why it says two overloads. Like, that's a rectangle three, and that's a oh, pff, right, forgot. Not using integers. There we go. So I'm not sure what this would look like. Um, presumably, it would stay the same visually. It might get a little slower because it has to unpack more entities, although it doesn't appear to have actually made any frame rate difference whatsoever. So that's good. Um, and then, like, in theory, this now has the inactive apron. Now, we don't actually know um, because we, again, have to probably put in something so we can actually see it a little bit better. Um, but in theory, this appears to just be fine, so we can enlarge that region. We're going to have to figure out how much larger we want it to be. Um, here we're coming up on the door that was broken. Uh, there's one more. Yeah, and, and so now it's not broken anymore. So... My theory, again, is just that that's all that was happening is the brain, you know, the brains were causing a problem there. I don't really have an iron ironclad proof that that's the case, but it looks like just having that apron is what fixed it, right? So it was exactly what I thought it was, as far as I can tell. Um... All right, so the question is how big that apron should be, and I'm not really sure. Um, it it probably wants to be, like, one room's worth, you know? Uh, but I don't know. Yeah. So I think that's probably fine. You know, I also think, like, let's let's do a couple things here. So first of all, let's make that apron size be, like, one room's worth. Um, which I believe we sort of have the concept of. Probably in world mode. So it's called standard room dimension, you know? Um, so I feel like what we want to do here is, like, have that apron be applied in here. So when you go begin world change, 
it can add a room to all sides, you know, just to make sure it catches everything on the other side of it. Uh, and standard room dimension is initialized somewhere. Yeah, you can see it here. It's basically just our like arbitrary calculation. So I'm not sure like how if we want to just feed that forward, I guess. Um, what we could do is say begin world change takes that like both sets. You know, it could take like the sim bounds uh, and the like apron bounds or something where you get both of those things and it just sets them both here. So the sim bounds go in here uh, and the apron bounds go in here, right? And then people just have to like update this to call the right thing. And I think that might be good. The reason for that is that like this code doesn't need larger bounds the editor code just uses that bounds. So I think this one um, would be the thing, you know, begin sim would would take uh, would take two different ones and that way they could they could each do what they want to do rather than having um, yeah, you get the idea. So you do sim bounds and apron bounds on that. Uh, and then I think uh, we would be in good shape. So this has the sim bounds here and it would also create the add radius two. Um, and here we would say work world mode um, standard room dimension, right? So that just means like unpack a much larger area than you would have. For the apron bounds. And again, my main concern here is just like putting too much stress on the unpack um <clears throat> putting too much stress on the unpack is mainly the problem you know uh and and I and I don't really know um I don't really know like how bad that would be. You know, maybe it's always fine. Maybe it's not. Uh, yeah. So I don't know. Um, that's, that's a tough call. Uh, and for now, I guess we'll kind of say like, okay, you know, um, let's just throw this in there at the moment. Um, oops. I got to fix my four coder. I, I keep saying I'm going to, but I never do. Um, it's It does weird deletion things. So I think that's all we would need to do for this. Uh, again, I just don't know, I, I don't know to what extent we want to standardize on this or, or what, like, if we look at where sim bounds is computed here, you know, that's, this is it, um, doing its, its dependent calculations. And you can see here, like we could say, okay, the apron bounds is a thing. We can also have this be, uh, like a, a standard number. So instead we could do like. Uh, apron radius like that um, and 
And then we can set that. <clears throat> Where is that getting set? It's weird. It's sometimes it's kind of hard. Using two different editors is hard, <laughs> to say the least. So standard apron radius is just going to be this. Uh, and I don't know what it should be. It, I don't know if it should be two times this, potentially. Like, it may be that we want that to be doubled, right? Um, and that, like I said, I'm just worried... It's free from a simulation standpoint because none of that stuff gets simulated. It's it's just sitting there not doing anything. So we don't add any actual cost in that sense. Um, but what we do is... Uh, where's the world mode? Shouldn't there be a world mode structure? here or is it mode world there it is um <clears throat> so my problem is just i don't actually know whether we are going to put too much stress on the unpacking and repacking of the entities every frame by forcing it to go through this incredibly large list of entities right um so I don't know. It doesn't seem to have a particularly deleterious effect on anything. Um, <clears throat> and you can see that it's not nothing, but man, it's not even 1%. So, and, and it's single threaded at 1%. So, you know, I mean... Yeah, I don't know. I, I, I guess we don't have to really think about that particularly hard. So I believe at this point now... Um, uh, we should be in good shape. That is standardized now. Um, yeah, I think, I think that's it. I think we're good. Seems, seems reasonable. Okay. Um, that doesn't apply anymore, right? Because the game state is not in here anymore. So I think that's all good. Um, so I think that's that's all good. Incremental. Wasn't the to-do there actually describing the bug? Uh, which to-do? I'm not sure which to-do you in which, which function are you talking about. I can check it out. Uh, anyway, so I think that's all good. Uh, what I would like potentially. Um, I'd like to do one other thing, maybe. Um, which is that when we generate the world, uh, handmade world mode around 300. Okay. Okay. 
Well, you know what? Uh, here in Handmade World mode, I'll just look at the to-dos. So I don't think that's actually true. Um, I think we're okay with that. Okay. So I think we're all good. Um, so what I wanted to do in the world... Uh, when we do the tile stuff, so in, well, first of all, let me also go ahead and in world mode, let's uh, take a look at that uh, place snake call, because now we should be able to re-enable our snakes, I'm sorry, not uh, in world gen. In place snake, wasn't there a place snake? There it is. Um, we can continue dropping the snake down. Also, why don't our snakes have multiple snake pieces? Um, we do now, unlike before, we do allow uh, multi-piece entities. So in like this place tile pattern call, for example, uh, the same, we could do the same thing that we did like this, for example. Um, so in here, we could do like basically this. And we could just say like uh, segment counts. And I guess the only thing that I don't know is how this would, like, so these things may need the ability to say which index they were. And and honestly, that's probably should have been in here instead of in the counting code. So we should probably fix that. Um, as well, which I'll do. So in here, when we add the snake entity, uh, we just need to now have a thing that adds uh, that adds the the like I don't know what you want to call it the um, the hopping part right so in here i think what we would probably do is say okay so you know the there's snake head and snake body and we should be able to get that to work now so this would go when you do place snake um i assume you would do this uh, like that. So you add a brain for the snake. It gets the brain ID in the, the gen entity, right? So in here, there's like a brain ID equals, uh, right? And it places the entity, and then it goes on to... And maybe I differentiate this by saying this is the head of the snake. So this is a thing that adds the snake head. You know, I'll be completely honest with you. Um, it's kind of annoying that these things don't work more directly, but, you know, whatever. 
Uh, anyway, so in here, you know, this says, okay, you know, uh, add the particular brain ID. So I believe we get the gen entity here in, in the gen entity callback, right? Um, no? Yeah, so, so this, like, kind of sucks. Like, this thing should get, you should pass it the, the generator thing, right? Because it needs that. And when you, if you call this directly, you should still have to probably pass it the data, you know, from one of these things. That would make the most sense, I think. At least that's what I think. So maybe you would do something like this. Maybe that. Like, here's the specification. Um, there's all this garbage. Right. Um, and there's, like, the spec has that, and it has... The brain ID um, and the brain in index or whatever. Right? So that stuff all just goes in here. And then when you create one of these entities, uh, you know, maybe that just gets assigned automatically even. You probably don't even have to do it in here. In fact, I guess now that I think about it, why pass it in? Maybe that was just dumb because it can just get assigned. So I guess I don't really even need to do that. I can just put it in here and say there's like the brain index and the brain ID, right? And those would just get set uh, on the outside thing. So so you would never have to do uh, that stuff. Right? So maybe these just don't work that way. These get set up in here. And then that doesn't have to happen. That seems plausible to me. Um, so that way, inside, like, place snake... that would happen right uh and in any of these other things like there's there's a monstar here i don't know if anyone actually ever calls it i don't think anyone does let's let's if zero these out for now and we'll port them later um and so i think it's just that and and the player or the orphans, I guess. None of these have brains at the moment, so that's fine. And in fact, you wouldn't actually need this or that because they will now happen automatically and nobody else is doing anything with brains anyway. And okay, so that's all great, I, ar I would argue. Um, and so then when we actually call these, uh, so when we call the actual entity gen code all we have to do is is just actually do that work where we so you can see there's like a gen entity at p and a gen entity at traversable here right um i want to say that this get sim space traverse so i want to say that this code kind of sucks because we probably always want to call gen entity at p right because then we can do this oh well i right like i feel like this is kind of 
putting the cart before like there should be a unified way to call this so that it takes the gen entity thing and does the assignment of the stuff that needs to get assigned so i don't know we'll see in a second so if we go down here to the stuff that uses the gen entity in in the room gen anyways we can at least do it there which i think would be correct so you can see here like if you say if it's a switch do this extra uh stuff right um <clears throat> but actually uh we shouldn't have to do that so what we should be able to do is move this now down here right when we do the place tile thing in here we would set those up as part of the gen entity so we'd say this right like that so now all of that happens nicely in there and this part just grabs these out of the gen entity itself that is probably how this should have worked because now everybody can have the brain assignment thing work the way it should we would then just make this place entity uh bit happen out here and then i think we're good yeah um so now The room switch brain just gets pulled out. And the only problem that we have is we don't know how the, like, I mean, I guess we just do this. And it's kind of janky. Um... But we don't need switch index anymore. And so door index is the only thing that we actually need. And and so really, you know, what we would prefer is if these things were part of the pending entities that got placed, you know? I mean, that would be nice. Um... So maybe we need to put this into this part of the code here, you know, um, so that it can correctly get the, the right wiring, right? Because it probably should be but that's the only thing that's a little bit weird, right? Um, That that's the only thing that's a little bit weird. So, uh, and if we didn't do that, it's it's still actually pretty simple to make this work even that way. So, um, when we do place tile pattern, you know, we we could do it the other way around. So we could just do this. When you do place tile pattern, you pass in the room switch brain. You know what I mean? Uh, and then when you call place tile pattern, you just say like, oh yeah. Um, there's like a brain that goes in that slot and the brain just goes here and then this goes away. Uh, I guess that is still there, but Door from A to B, door from B to A. This doesn't... All right. 
No, I think that's fine. Um, and so when we do this, we would just use the brain in question on from this connection, right? Um, maybe I want to do it this way. Just to make it a little bit simpler on us. So we just have that, uh, we just have that set up. And I think it would just work. My only question there is like why this probably wants to be just off of the world, not the grid, because there is no grid and we don't need there to be one. So it's probably just that um, would be my guess. Yeah, right. Uh, it's, is the generator not have that in there there is one what was the problem oh room switch brain i gotta fix my four coder this is just so annoying okay so it just takes forever to do anything um at the moment which is really annoying all right so if we if, you know take care of the rest of this stuff um, this is going to be slightly different. So in here, there's going to be, uh, add snake body and add snake head like so. Um, this is just going to be head and this is just going to be body. Like so. And, um, that should really be the end of that. When we place the actual snake down, um, I assume the brain goes into slot zero, although I don't actually know. Yes. I assume it just goes into slot zero, because I'm not sure why it wouldn't. Um, and so it's just going to add the snake head in there. Uh, the brain ID is what the brain ID is. And it's going to place the entity. Then it's going to go through here and just do, like, uh, segment count. And I assume we want, you know, at least one of these. But for now, we'll... Oops. For now, we'll just do four. That's fine. We'll do a segment index zero, segment index less than segment count, segment plus plus there. Uh... So we'll add some number of segments. And here, the only thing we would change is that now when we uh, when we create these, like, segments, it's going to be the segment index plus one, right? So it's everything after. <clears throat> I don't think we need to do anything here. Uh, this... looks fine I I think the append entity stuff sucked if I remember correctly um, you're always passing the previous one so I kind of feel like we probably want that to not suck the way that it's sucking at the moment so we may want to fix that uh, as well. Like, this is just a pain and is not good, right? So, easiest way to do that, I think, would be to change append entity slightly. Um, so, I'm going to hack it for now, and then I want to replace this. So, think that's what we're talking about right I also don't know if that makes any difference either 
Okay. So we need to look at that because that's not great. Um, but most of this stuff is kind of jank anyway. So maybe that's the next thing we do. Maybe next weekend we'll start improving our placement code. Uh... So now, uh, yeah, we got to have, the connection has to have that, gen connection has to have that um, room switch brain. Looks like room connection, we accidentally added it to room connection, which was not correct. It's actually gen connection that's supposed to have it. Um, like this. The thing about that is it's probably the wrong one, though. Um, so, because you need actually both directions would, would potentially have a different one. So I may have been right, like, it may be that that's what you actually want. You know what I mean? Um... And then you need to just pull out the correct one. Because you can't use the same one for both. You could put it in here, you know, if you wanted to. Um... And really, that would make more sense. But, like, if you look at what happens in Connect, it doesn't return those to you. You you know, they're both... They're here. <clears throat> and, and maybe I should just do this. So, if you think about how this would work, right? It would go in here. Uh, and you would say, look, there's a door, and this is the brain for that door. Like that. So if there's a door brain ID, you're supposed to use it, right? And the problem is these add room connections, we don't get those back. So when we call connect, we don't actually get back what those room connections actually are. And we would need them. You know what I mean? And it'd be really easy for us to do that. We would just need connect to actually return like a structured thing that, that you get back, right? And, you know, and or gen connection just tells you what your room connections are is the other option, I suppose. Um, but it seems to me like you probably don't need that. I don't know. I mean, maybe you do. Maybe you just do this. <clears throat> right uh, and then when you do that uh, connect call it's it's literally just like that right that's the connection from A to B that's the connection from B to A and you just do that you know um, and then things get a lot simpler if I'm right, uh, because then you just do this. Uh, and that should work, right? Uh, what did we call that? Door brain ID? So you just say from A to B, there's a door brain now because we actually have that connection. And then in here, you don't actually do this at all, right? Um, instead, you just say, well, it's just is the room con door brain ID there? 
right? And now we know that it's going this direction because we're looking at our room's connections. So that's actually like way nicer and it's way clearer what's happening there. So that seems good. Um, do we not have an is valid on brains? <laughs> so helpful. Um, so whatever, like, here's is valid, and here's the, the brain ID. I mean, I guess it's just that. All right, so that's a tremendous number of changes, and so I probably broke everything. Um, but now we can start to actually like go through this and and futz around with it, right? Uh, and try to get that working. So let me first of all go to debug mode, and we can uh, start to, to pull apart what I just did. Uh, and we'll go from there. All right. So I'm not sure why I did not. For some reason, it's not showing me where we are actually getting suspended. Oh, it just looks like looks like a call to zero. Um, where did my call stack go? It went away. Um, so it looks like we're just we're dispatching into a null handler, right? Um, it appears to be what's happening. So a callback into something that did not get initialized, right? Uh, we should probably make it easier to trap those because, like... Once you jump into zero, it's hard to unwind the stack sometimes uh, if you don't have special code in the debugger to do it, which I think Remedy uh, doesn't. So what we should probably do is guard around the creator call. You know what I mean? So when we actually call... Uh, let me actually see if I can search this more e Yeah, okay. I wish... Uh, yeah. Uh, oh boy. So I wish I had my editor right now, but we'll do what we can. So in here we uh we're almost certainly like dispatching like in here we're probably doing something where we're not actually uh specifying what the thing should be or something like that. So we're doing it. Oh yeah. Right there. I mean, that's what it is. Right. Um, and so, you know, the only thing I'm saying is maybe we should have a thing that asserts so that before we jump in, we can see like what it was or something like that. Um, and so what I was thinking is like inside room gen before it actually calls, uh, the dispatch code when we're actually looping through the pending, pending entities or something like that. When you call gen entity at traversal, that kind of thing. Uh, maybe we can put in a, a cert in here that says that uh, the pending entities like creator call is not zero. And again, the only reason for that is just to make it, oops, uh, easier to debug, right? So now if I run it, I'm hoping that you just write, and so you can see it, it's just a way to like help the person who maybe like stumbles across that later, not knowing what you were doing right then, it was really easy for us to debug right then because that happens to be what we were fussing around with. But like you can imagine if that just happened out of the blue, why that would be bad because it would mean uh, that you would literally have no idea who jumped in there and you'd have to start doing a branch and, and bound like debugging process to find out who jumped to zero and why, right? So it's just a like to help make that 
less painful um, for people who are, you know, doing this in the future, right? Uh, is all we're talking about. So uh, let's see where we're at. Okay, so we're running the placement code just fine now. Uh, so you know, uh, we're, we're we're good here. Where where are we at time? We're we're about fifteen minutes till the end of the stream. I want to say. I don't know if that's right. Uh, but so let's just take a quick look here and see if that um, if that fussing defussed us. Uh, and and we'll see. Um, okay. <clears throat> all right. So I think that's all good. Um, <clears throat> Uh, I gotta unlock this door real quick. Uh, so it looks like the body, this snake thing doesn't seem to have the correct body. Like, it looks like everything worked fine, though. Like, it placed the snake, and the snake is hopping around. Uh, so it's just an asset. Like, we have to label those assets properly. Um, looks like. Uh, but otherwise we're good. That looks broken. So somehow that let someone hop on there. Oh yeah. Okay, cool. I see why that would be. Um, so we want to fix that bug. That's a definite bug and an interesting bug. Yeah. Oh, that's very interesting. Okay. Um, so anyway, uh, all that seems fine, but uh, other things we got to fix. Uh, and so let's fix the asset problem first, because I don't really even know um, what even is getting set here. So I, I need to really quickly just see even what is the body stuff for that snake. And, and I, I don't, I don't even know. Because uh, we haven't really looked at that stuff hardly ever. Um, so if, if we look at at uh, the skeleton stuff, uh, what is that even? I don't even know. Um, <clears throat> so it'd be character skeleton. Um, is, is what that actually is. And in terms of those pieces, like the snake body piece is just going to be whatever the other thing was. So when we place the snake, it's going to be body and head for... Oh, so I think it all it was is that we didn't ever set these up right um so it may just be that setting those tags right so i think that's all good uh we're gonna have to add some stuff to quickly teleport us to places in a dungeon because pretty soon this is going to get really old um we can use hot code reloading which we have right to fix basic things but world generation you can't reload because the world was already generated right so reloading that code doesn't help so we're going to need ways to like inspect the world more quickly uh, in the future all right so that appears to be working there's like little skeletons in there now right um and the only question i have there is they, they don't seem to be setting their direction which seems wrong um which I don't actually know, are they, do they even have? I think they do. So I feel like they should be setting their direction and aren't. That's the only thing that I can immediately see being weird. And so let me just fix that as well, uh, since we haven't looked at this stuff in forever. Um, so here's the snake code, and I, I might just pull that out real quick. 
just so it's easier to see. Um, Uh, and I don't even know, like, it doesn't need half of this stuff, probably. Um, but. Okay. Uh, so there's our snake code. And so what does this thing even do? Um. Looks like it needs the entropy. How does the sim region not have entropy? Why? Why would that be the case? That's pretty weird. Because you would think that all game entropy would just come from the sim region... That's pretty strange, but okay for now. Uh, I'm I'm not upset about the fact that that comes in off a separate pipe, but it's a little weird. <clears throat> All right, so this thing does this little hoppable nonsense, um, and yeah, it just doesn't. It just never does that. So yeah. Um, so we need to set the facing direction of these guys, and it looks like the way that works is like you would look at the delta between these two. So yeah, this could be done probably way more efficiently. Like blowing an ATAN two per seems kind of stupid for that. You know, honestly. Um, So that doesn't seem like it's necessary, but, you know. So I don't think we want to be doing that long term because it's just dumb. Uh, but it's fine for the moment because there are so few of them. So we really just need a segment delta, and uh, in this case, the segment delta uh, is just going to be like this this person's location and the other person's location, right? So we, we already sort of have this uh, traversable reference thing. And there was the thing that, like tells us where it is you can see it here right so when you do get sim space traversable um i th think that's all we would need to do so if we did this we would just say okay there's the sim region in both cases and all we're doing here is saying whatever the like occupying and came from things are that's how we would do the delta right so the delta is just wherever we um, wherever the last occupying thing is, yeah, you can see this, right? 
So we're just going to say, like, okay, we're going to the last occupying, and we're coming from the one we're on now. And I think that's all we would actually need. Oop. Keep doing that. I think that's all we would need. Um, and once again, I've <clears throat> stupidly made it so I have to hop all the way down there. Okay, so now they correctly, like, orient themselves in the direction that they should, right? Um, which is good. They're, they're a little bit scaled down, but that's fine. I mean, they're not really supposed to be used for this. They're not actually snake segments. I just used a random skeleton thing for them. Um, so that's fine. Okay, um, so I guess that's good for now. Uh, we have to fix some bugs, and we have some to do, so there's some stuff we want to do there, and uh, we'll deal with it tomorrow. Or, I mean, not tomorrow, uh, next weekend. But I think that's all good. And it's good to have the snakes back in now as well. Um, all right, so we'll do a brief Q&A, because uh, I think we're right on time.